All right, good afternoon, guys. This is my second go at this one here. I just did a wonderful memory group a moment ago, and unfortunately, none of my audio was with it. So let's try this once more. Um, I want to welcome you guys to our interactive memory group. This is going to be pre recorded for you guys today. Uh, so we're going to go through as we would like a normal memory group. There's going to be a bit of theory here to start us off, uh, and then we'll get into our warm up. Today, we're looking at our cross call progressions. And we'll talk a little about why that's important. Uh, then after that, I'm going to have a few at home activity games that I'd like to show you guys. Uh, I've got with me today a few coin pieces, and a couple cards as well, things that you can find around your house uh, and maybe challenging. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a significant other, a spouse or a grandchild and see how we fare against them in some of these games. Uh, the other activity that I would show you that the end here will be our A to Z alphabet topics. And that's a written piece that you will need some paper and a pencil. So if you don't already have that with you, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pencil, bring that over for our later on activity. And otherwise, let's get started into our first bit here, which as I mentioned was theory. Today, we're gonna to talk about and look at a few of the uh, simple things that we can include in our life that are gonna help improve our memory. So let's start ourselves here. Again, this is memory loss, seven tips to improve your memory, okay? This is by the Mayo Clinic and it is an article related around healthy aging. So again, this is not specific to head injury, but this is valid for absolutely everybody. So as we start off, you're looking at number one, including physical activity in your daily routine. Physical activity is known to increase blood flow to our body and that includes the brain. And this is something that can help keep our memory sharp. For most adults, the recommendation is about 150 minutes of moderate activity. That includes things like brisk walking, playing with our animals, uh, trying to keep up with the little ones if you've got children. These are the light or moderate aerobic activities. And as well, it would recommend 75 minutes uh, of a more vigorous aerobic activity. That might be jogging, uh, that could be playing a recreational sport. Uh, if you've got an elliptical or a treadmill at home, any of those pieces would fall under that. And keeping in mind that you can spread that throughout the week, which means that you could just be doing 10 minutes each day throughout the week, and that would hit your approximate goal of 75 minutes. Number two, we're looking at here, staying mentally active. So this is just as important as being physically active as it keeps our body in shape, but uh, by mentally stimulating activities, we'll work on keeping the brain in shape. Uh, so if you've joined us here today for our memory group, you are already taking the first step towards this, but other things that you might include in your day could be things like crossword puzzles, uh, playing bridge, any sort of card game, uh, alternative routes uh, when driving from home. And that's just to kind of uh, take you out of that monotonous same route that you're doing every single day. You're not really thinking or engaging too much with that thought. Where if you did take an alternate route, you're gonna be seeing new scenery. Uh, you may have to think about where that next turn is coming and that stop that you need to make. And as well, they talk about learning and playing uh, musical instruments, volunteering at local school or community organizations. These are all wonderful options to continue to stay mentally active. Another important piece that we're all aware of, socializing regularly. So uh, we know that social interaction can help ward off depression and stress, both of which can contribute to a loss of memory. Uh, we're always gonna look for opportunities to get together with loved ones, friends, and others, especially if you do live alone. Now, keep in mind that could include as well, calling someone on the phone or having a Zoom uh, or video chat in any form. Getting organized, and this is a very general one, but uh, recognizing that we're more likely to forget things if your home is cluttered, if your notes are in disarray. So if you don't already have a system where you like to uh, jot things down, maybe you've got a to-do list by your fridge or a calendar that you uh, kind of plan and note things down, continue to use these things um, to keep track of the things that we want to get done in life is very important as it takes away a lot of that extra clutter that we talked about. Uh, another one that they discuss here is that you may even repeat each entry aloud as you jot it down and that helps us cement it in our memory. And we'll talk about the reasons for that a little bit later. But keeping to-do lists as well as uh, checking off items that you've completed, setting aside a space for your wallet, keys and other essentials. So if you have a basket at home, maybe that you always ensure that you put your keys away in that basket when you come home. If you're unsure where those keys have ended up and they aren't in that basket, you know you've got to go look for them. But by having that one uh, central location, you're gonna start to form a routine and a habit that every time you come in, you're gonna take those keys and the first thing you do is place them right in that bin. 
Additionally, limiting distractions and not doing too many things at once. If you focus on the information that you're trying to retain, you're more likely to recall it later and it can also help connect what you're trying to retain to favorite songs or another familiar concept. So we'll talk about a little bit of these pieces as we get into our activity and how we can use that to uh, strengthen our memory. Some more uh, very common ones here that you guys have likely heard, so things like sleeping well. Sleep plays an important role in the consolidation of your memory so you can recall them down the road. And that means that you need to make sleep a, a number one priority. When they're talking about the consolidation of memories here, what they're saying happens is that as we go to sleep, our brain kind of takes a moment to uh, reflect and consolidate anything that happened throughout our day. And we would then transfer it over to our long-term memory, assuming that it held enough importance for us. But if we do have a poor sleep habit, we might notice that some of those things, even if they are very important for us to be remembering, uh, we're less likely to recall them later on because we didn't give ourselves a good chance to consolidate them into that long-term store. Another one here that we have is eating healthy. And a healthy diet is always good for your brain. Things like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, choosing low-fat protein sources, including fish, beans, or skinless chicken and poultry. Uh, what you drink does count as well and is very important, remembering that uh, drinking too much alcohol can lead to confusion and memory loss, as well as any other drug use could uh, dampen your ability to memorize. Managing chronic conditions. And so this is important that we follow doctor recommendations for treatment of medical conditions such as depression, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, and hearing loss. The more we're taking care of ourselves, the better our memory is to serve us. In addition, uh, you might consider reviewing medications with a doctor if you've had a recent medication change and you've noticed that your memory uh, has become much poorer since, there is the possibility that there could be an interaction with your medication. And that's one thing to keep in mind, okay? Now I understand we did go quite quickly through some of these pieces. So if at any point you're unsure of what we've been hearing, you can rewind this video and go back as well, pausing so that you can see the information presented. Good, and from here, we're gonna go over to our warm up next. This is our cross crawl progression here. We're going through with Jack. Now with this, please, I do encourage you to come on up out of your seat, get that heart rate pumping. And uh, this is gonna be acting as our warm up. The intention is that we get the hemispheres of the brain, the left and the right half communicating with each other before we go into our uh, memory stimulation activities, okay? Let's get started here, guys.
this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Perfect, great work there, guys. I'm gonna invite you back to the activity space here. So again, that last piece there, great way for us to get the heart rate elevated, great way to get some blood flowing through to that brain. And as well, a big importance of trying to have those hemispheres of the brain, both left and right, communicating with each other. I hope you enjoyed the warm up there. The first activity I wanted to present to you guys was going to be one that we call coin counter. And I've got a series of coins here that I'll set up for you guys. And the intention here is quite simple, okay? We're gonna take our coins. And before I present to you any tips and tools that you might be using to memorize them, we're just gonna go ahead and give ourselves 30 seconds here. I'm gonna get my timer started. And I just want you to observe the order of the coins here, okay? You're gonna do your best in that 30 seconds. And then what I'll do is I'll cover them up for you guys and I'm gonna ask you to recall them aloud to me. Good, so again, you've got 15 seconds here, guys. Just so you're aware of the types of coins we have here, we've got toonie, loonie, quarter, nickel, and dime. Perfect, you've had 30 seconds there, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cover and just block those coins out. Again, I've given you no memorization techniques, so let's see how well we've done here. Maybe you've just visually looked at them. You kind of have an idea of the shape in your head. Maybe you've already included some memorization techniques that I'll offer you. Good, and then what I'll do here is I'm gonna display them to you. I want you to quickly, before I do, call them back to me in the order as best you can. Good, let's see here if you got that correct. So once again, our order, Toonie, loony, quarter, nickel, and dime. Perfect, let's see how well you did with that. Hopefully you were able to get a few of them. If you were running into some problems, let me introduce you to a few techniques that we're gonna use to try and memorize these coins, okay? So first off, we talked about the visual piece, right? That we can see each of these coins, we can see that there's a large to a small order. So there's a little bit of a pattern happening. Uh, but the other piece that we're going to do, we're going to verbally cue ourselves. So I can see the order of these coins. That's one learning technique or one memorization. The second is auditory. And I want to say these coins aloud to myself as I'm viewing them from left to right. So what I'll do is I'm going to set up my 30 second timer once again. I'm going to scramble my order just briefly. And now I'm going to work on saying these aloud to myself as I observe them. So if 30 seconds on our clock, as I'm going through from left to right, I've got toonie, nickel, quarter, loony, dime. So now I've got two ways that I'm memorizing them, both visually by looking and verbally by cueing them to myself. It's toonie, nickel, quarter, loony, dime. Good, I'm gonna encourage you guys to say those aloud to yourself a few times. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Good, and then I'm gonna cover these up for us. And in our memory group, we're always talking about oftentimes in the real world, someone's not gonna give us the uh, full concentration that we need to complete our task. We might have little distractions like uh, maybe there's a fan spinning in the background, there's a music uh, playing somewhere in another room. Maybe we can hear stomping of the feet in the room above us. These are all going to be distractions that are going to take away from our recall. I'm hoping you guys have had the chance to continue to repeat that aloud to yourself. As I've done just now, giving you a few moments of distraction. And I'm going to reveal these order here, guys. Let's see how you did. Say them aloud to me once before I reveal them. Good, and let's see if you're correct with that. Here we go. You've got toonie, nickel, quarter, loony, and dime. Good work there. Let's add a few more techniques here, guys. So now we've got one, our visual, observing the coins. We've got two, our verbal cueing and repeating them to ourselves. Now let's try and look at a chunking technique. I'm gonna set these up in a small pattern here.
Good. So now as we look at our coins here, there's just a small pattern to them. And this is where we can introduce what we call the chunking technique. When we're talking about the chunking technique, we're talking about taking large bits of information. In this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five coins. And I want to reduce the total information that I need to remember. So I'm going to start grouping these into groups of three. Maybe you can already see the pattern as you're looking across here. I've kind of separated them just a little bit. You're going to notice I've got the largest coin and the smallest coin remaining largest, remaining smallest, and the odd man out. I'll take my red pen here and draw some dividers so you can see that clearly. Uh, it's a bit bright, perhaps you can't see it too clearly, I apologize. Yeah, so again, let's look at our coin order here and taking observations of our chunking, we've got largest, smallest, toonie, dime, loony, nickel, and the odd man out here is quarter. Toonie, dime, loony, nickel, and quarter. I'm going to give you guys 15 seconds more to take a look at those guys. Okay, remembering the pattern that we've established, largest, smallest, largest, smallest, odd man out. Good. Saying them aloud to yourself one last time before I cover them up. Toonie, dime, loony, nickel, quarter. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and cover these for us, guys. Again, in the real world, we're always mentioning that people may not be so courteous as to give us the time to complete the task at hand. But just like that article had mentioned, there is nothing wrong with us. Let's say I, I've tasked you with memorizing these coins, and now I'm asking you questions about what did you have for lunch? How was your afternoon? Do you have any plans for the weekend? And as I ask these questions, your mind might start to wander into all of these other topics that I've brought up. But if this is an important task, something that you need to make sure you get done, there's nothing wrong with saying, excuse me, John, I need a moment. I'm trying to remember these coins. You can ask me later. And as we do that, I'm going to go ahead and reveal those coins. Take one last guess at what order you think they were in. Remember, there was some chunking. Maybe you're visually seeing them here and you're thinking of it that way. Maybe you verbally continued to say them aloud to yourself. I believe the order should be Toonie, Dime, Looney, Nickel, and the odd man out is Quarter. Let's take a look here, guys. Good. So again, hopefully you've taken that chunking technique. We've got largest, smallest, remaining largest, remaining smallest, and the odd man out here is quarter. Good work with that one, guys. Let's go ahead and try one more game here, the same game, quite simple setup. Again, I encourage you to try this at home. Maybe you've got a partner uh, or someone that would join you in playing this game, and you guys could each take a turn having the coins displayed, showing them for 30 seconds, covering them for 15, and asking the individual to recall them to you. I'm going to shake up our order here, guys, giving us one more turn. Good. So slightly different order of the coins. Not too much has changed, but let's try and identify and see if we can add any of those chunking techniques we had talked about. So as we observe our coins here, we've got toonie, nickel, loony, dime, and again, the odd man out is quarter. Now, when we're doing chunking, we're trying to establish patterns. So we might see here that this is the largest value, our toonie, that's $2. This here is our nickel for five cents, $1, 10 cents, and again, the odd man out is 25 cents. So we've gone high, low, high, low, odd man out. I hope you can see that pattern just there briefly. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys five more seconds here before I cover them up, and then I'll ask you to recite them back to me. Good. So remember our two types of uh, our memorization. Maybe we're verbally or visually sorry. Maybe we're visually still imagining the coins that we can see behind our black book. 
perhaps we've gone with the auditory option. We're still repeating those coins aloud to ourselves. And number three, maybe we've identified some patterns in our coin system here. And we're now using that to chunk the bits of information into smaller sections. I give you five more seconds here, guys, and then let's take a look at our order. Remembering the pattern that we identified in chunking being high, low, high, low, and odd man out. Go ahead and recall those coins for me as best you can. I believe the order was toony nickel, loony dime, and quarter. Let's see if you guys are correct in those guesses. And so again, high value, that's toony, low value, nickel, high value, loony, low value, dime, and the odd man out is our quarter on the end. Great work there, guys. Again, that's just a simple game that you guys could do either on your own time at home or with a partner if you wanted to challenge each other. Seeing how many coins you can add, remember that you're not limited to five. Maybe you've got a few extra coins lying around the space. You can always continue to add and remove coins as needed. Making the game as challenging or as easy as it's suited for you. Good, let's take a look at one more game here, guys. This is gonna be another household game, one that you could do either on your own time or with a partner. And I'll show you a few different uh, difficulty levels for this one as well. So I've got my set of cards here. We'll see as I place them down, no specific order to start. And we're gonna go through with the same process as we did for our coin game. This time looking at a few additional memorization techniques, okay? So on the first round here, I'm just gonna ask that you guys try and remember the color. So there's no need for you to remember the suit or the face image, just looking at color to start us. We've added an additional card here. So again, we've got six total now instead of the five base coins. And we're gonna continue to try and memorize right through left as best we can. Without me providing any memorization techniques, I'm just gonna let you guys look at these ones to start. Good, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Good, and without me giving you any techniques, I'm gonna cover these up. Let's see what order you've got. Good, and again, I wanna mention the distractions piece that we had talked about before. When I've given you the task of memorizing these, it wouldn't be beneficial for you to answer questions like, how was your day? What were you up to earlier? This is gonna distract you and have you uh, thinking on things that aren't relevant to the task at hand. So again, remembering that it can be difficult sometimes to tell others that, hey, I just need a moment. Could you Take a second, we can chat later, but that would exactly be the way we would respond to a situation like this. Hey, John, I'm busy trying to memorize the uh, cards in order. If you could just give me a moment and I'll answer those questions later. All right, let's take a look at our order guys. See how well you've done. Again, I hadn't provided any memorization techniques. So as we look through here, our order was black, black, red, black, red, red. That's the first setup, see how well you did there. Again, I hadn't provided any memorization techniques. Maybe you had already implemented some from your previous attendance in our groups, or maybe you weren't quite sure how to go about it. I'm gonna reorder these cards, guys, and I'm gonna provide you with a few memorization techniques, okay? Good, so I've got our core cards in no specific order here. And the first technique we'll talk about is the mnemonics technique. Now you guys have heard of this, whether you know it or not. Um, if you had ever learned your ABCs, uh, if you have ever had a commercial that would get stuck in your head, that little jingle in that tune that you're hearing, that's actually using the mnemonics technique. So we're gonna try that same thing here. And as we're looking through at our cards, traditionally we would go, it's black, black, red, black, red, red. 
There was no cadence, there was no tune, there was no inflection in my voice to add any sort of meaning to the changing of our pattern here. So instead, I'm gonna try and add the mnemonic technique to this. When I take a look at my order from left through right, I'm gonna create a little bit of a jingle, a little bit of a rhythm or a pattern for me to help myself memorize them. So as I look at this order, left through right, I've got black, black, red, black, red, red. And you can see as I started into that cadence how it might start to become easier to memorize. Black, black, red, black, red, red. Good, and as I continue, I'm gonna work on that repeating technique as well. Sing it a few times as I go through. Let's look at it once more. Black, black, red, black, red, red. Good, I want you guys to continue to try and use that mnemonic technique. Repeat it aloud to yourself. I'm gonna cover them up. Let's go one final time here. We've got black, black, red, black, red, red. Good. Keep that pattern, keep that repetition, guys. I'm gonna cover them up for you. Again, we're gonna give it about 15 seconds here. During this time, uh, I might distract you with questions about what you had for breakfast. Again, how was your day? What does the weekend look like? And simply you would say, hey, John, I'm just trying to memorize the cards right now. If you could give me a moment. Good. All right, go ahead and say that order aloud once more to yourself. See if we've gotten it. And I'm gonna reveal it here now for you. All right, so as we take a look at our cards, hopefully you've been able to continue repeating them. You've got black, black, red, black, red, red. Great work there, guys. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna order these once more, changing it up just slightly. And we're gonna try and see if we can add any chunking patterns or techniques to the same set of cards. All right, so I'm gonna set my order here once again. And so initially when we look through, we might see from right through left that it's just an alternating color pattern, right? Red, black, red, black, red, black. But this time I might also ask you to memorize the face uh, or the suit presented. So in this case, we've got ladies, gents, and other is how we've set them up. And we can see that our pattern is reds first, black second, red first, black second, red first, black second. So the chunking that we can do here is quite simple, right? We've got ladies, gents, and others, and we always know that our pattern is gonna go red first, black second. So instead of trying to memorize all the way through left to right, red, black, red, black, red, black, I can simply in my head go, I've got ladies, gents, and others, and it's red, black. That's only two pieces of information, or three pieces, sorry. Ladies, gents, and others, red and black. Yeah, four pieces total. Good, say them aloud to yourself once more. Maybe you've uh, found other patterns. Ladies, gents, others, red and black. I'm gonna cover that up for you guys. Take 10 seconds to yourself. All right, hopefully you've got that down. You've given yourself a moment saying them aloud to yourself. Go ahead and take a guess for me which order the cards were in. Again, try and include the color and the face. Good, and let's see how you've done with that. Here they are. So again, hopefully you were able to use the chunking technique of ladies, gents, and others. And we always knew that it was red, black, red, black, red, black. I apologize for the glare here, guys. It's a little bit bright, but I hope it's all right visually for you guys. Awesome work on that, guys. We're gonna to go to one other game that I had prepared for us here. Now this is a written game, so that's where those pens and paper will come out if you do have them with you. I'm gonna pop these to our side for now. And the next game that we're going to try, again, this could be one that you would challenge yourself with uh, independently or with a partner. If you guys want to try and add a little bit of competition, see how quickly you can do it. And this next game is called the A to Z Alphabet Topics. 
Now you guys have seen or heard of this before likely. How it's gonna work is that on your sheet of paper here, you're gonna write A, B, C all the way through to Z. And I'm gonna assign a topic or you would choose a topic from my pre-made list here, or maybe uh, thinking of one for yourself. And we're gonna go through and try and come up with a letter for A related to, and the topics that I have for you guys are sports, uh, we've got travel, we've got groceries and food, uh, we've got cars, nature and animals, or random. So in my example, let's say I've chosen uh, animals, I might go A for aardvark, B for badger, C for cat, D for dog, and I'm going to work myself through all the way until I hit Z. Now, if you're on, the, on a roll here and you're feeling really good with it, I'm going to encourage that you guys try and come up with maybe two or three uh, words related to your topic for each letter. So that might mean, again, that B could be badger, it could be uh, boxer, the dog, it could be, um, could be baby, animal. Regardless, I'm going to try and come up with a couple. As you're going through, if you find a letter that you get stuck on, Q's, W's, X's, Z, just doing your best to move on from it and then come back when you're complete, okay? I'm gonna put a five minute timer on our stopwatch here. Again, let me review the topics for you guys in case you're unsure. You should have that paper labeled A through Z. The topics provided were sports, travel, groceries and food, cars, nature and animals, or random. And if you choose random, the uh, words that you'd be filling into your A through Z are the first thing that comes to your mind, simply working on that recall piece. All right, good luck guys. Hopefully you've got those letters down. I'm gonna revisit you once I've completed my list. Good luck. And do do your best to speed through this. It is about uh, being quick with it as well. But if you get uh, caught on one, like I said, jump past it and come back afterwards. All right, guys, we're coming up on halfway, just about two minutes 30 left to go. Keep working through that list. As you do, I'm briefly gonna give you my example list here that I've just completed. And I've chosen the topic of animals. And so A through Z, I've got aardvark, badger, cat, dog, elephant, frog, goat, horse, iguana, jaguar, kangaroo, lemur, mouse, newt, octopus, porcupine, quail, rhino, sea monkey, tiger, urchin, vulture, wolf, x-ray fish, yak, and zebra. Again, A through Z, they're completed. The, the in uh, intention is to complete it as quickly as you can, but remembering as well that you can go back if you've got additional time, try and get a second for each of those letters as well. We've got a minute 30 left, guys. Keep working through that. OK. 
could last minute coming up, guys, finish those lists. If there's any that you were challenged on, maybe those QWXs, the harder letters, maybe you consider going to Google to try and find a few. Be resourceful. Perfect, 30 seconds left, guys. Finish out those lists as best you can. Good. Now take a time here now to review your list. See how many you've managed to come up with. Maybe you again had the chance to come up with a few for each letter. Were there certain letters that you struggled on? Maybe you've chosen to do multiple topics as well, remembering that we had a few options here in sports, travel, groceries and food, cars, nature, animals, random, and any other thing that you could come up with, guys. Feel free to go through that on your own time as well. Trying to continue to grow those lists. If you've done it a few times on a separate occasion, maybe you try and go through the same topic without repeating any of the previous answers you've given. You'll find that that'll begin to add quite a challenge as typically our mind will default to a, uh, a default response, right? So A for me is aardvark. As I mentioned earlier, this is the second time I had to go through this because the first, my audio had messed up. And you bet your bottom dollar that the first time I did this, the A as well was aardvark. So if you've gone through a few times on this activity and you've noticed, well, I'm coming up with all the same words, perhaps you have that, the old lists with you and making sure that you come up with a set of lists that's unique and doesn't repeat any of the old ones that you've done. I hope that went well for you guys this afternoon. This is a little bit uh, different in our interactive style here. I encourage you guys to take the time on your own here to continue to practice these games, whether that was the coin sorting game you had seen, taking a few miscellaneous uh, coins from around the house, whatever you can find in the couch cushions, check your pockets, and simply setting them out in an order. I encourage you to use between three and 10 coins. Traditionally, when you show these coins, you'll give yourself a minimum of about 30 seconds. And as you start to get better, you would reduce that time. And then go ahead and just cover them up. If you've got a partner, maybe they've rearranged them for you and we'll cover them. And then give yourself about 10 to 15 seconds before you try and recall them. During that time, repeating those uh, aloud to yourself. Maybe you're really visualizing and focusing on the order of coins and then allowing your partner to present them and you reading them back. The alternate was that card game as well. We had our sets of suits and we could try and either memorize color. Maybe we're trying to remember the face on the cards. And if we get really good, we wanna challenge ourselves, we can do number, suit and color. Well, color and suit go together, but number and suit as we're going through and trying to memorize those. And then the last activity presented today was our A through Z alphabet topics, which is a written game in which you'll choose a topic, any topic that you can think of, knowing that ones that are more familiar to us are likely to find more success. Topics that are less familiar, again, adding a lot more challenge for us. And we're simply trying to recall uh, a word with each letter that's A through Z associated to that topic. Great. I'm going to let you guys go here for the afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the session. If you had any further questions about what you've seen in today's pre-recorded video, feel free to reach out to my email. That's 